Hi there, I'm Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network. Thanks for tuning in to our YouTube channel, Debt Bites. And today I want to cover how to resolve a repossession. Not just on your credit report, but how to resolve debt overhang or, or the what's called a deficiency balance. What's owed after you either voluntarily turn in a car that you haven't paid off fully, or if they come and take it from you. It's a repossession either way, voluntary or involuntary. And once they auction that off, they're usually going to do a fire sale, right? They're not going to, it's not like a private seller, what you can gain from a sale of a vehicle or a motorcycle or a motorhome or a boat, anything like that. It's, it's auction prices, right? So they're going to get in often enough, they're going to get less than what you currently owe on the loan. So they'll take what they get at the auction, subtract it from the balance of your note or your loan with them. And then what's left over is called the deficiency balance. That deficiency balance is something that will still show as owed on your credit report from the servicer or the financing company. That kind of debt is often sold off to debt buyers or placed with external third party collections, even though it's still owned by the finance company. So it's, it, it can show up on your credit report in different ways is, is my point. When that's showing on your credit report, it is impacting your ability to move on with your life once you bounce back financially. It's going to prohibit you from accomplishing certain goals like home ownership a lot of the time because it's uh, usually of a size, uh, dollar amount, unpaid debt that's going to exceed underwriters. Um, you know, they're not going to overlook that. So it's going to impact your debt to income ratio to debt. You might not be paying on it, but it's going to skew your debt to income as well. So there's all kinds of reasons to look at resolving deficiency balances and not just waiting for those things to roll off of your credit report. And by the way, you can be sued on deficiency balances as well. So that's another motivator. What options exist? Well, payment plans. Okay. So, uh, if you need a payment plan, it's something that you have to discuss with the servicer, with the finance company, the debt collector, the new debt owner. Most of these guys are all approachable. It just has to be something that's conceivable for them. It's got to be something that, um, you know, if all you're going to send them is $15 a month on a $12,000 deficiency balance, they're not going to do it. Uh, but if you can meet in the middle and come to some kind of arrangement for monthly payments, they're going to be really easy to talk to about that. However, I'm a big fan of just ripping the Band-Aid off at that point, not picking at the corners. And what I mean by that is, is that you've already had the repo show up on your credit report and it's damaged to that extent. You don't get brownie points really at this point by paying the whole deficiency balance uh, completely. So I'm really uh, more prone to advising you to gather up whatever funds you can to get a settlement done. Now, how much should you target? Well, it varies. It really is going to depend on who you're dealing with. Uh, if it's, is, is it Ford Motor? Is it Honda? Is it um, Nissan? Is it some uh, smaller kind of used car type of dealer? Is it a debt buyer? Are you able to work with a third party agency and come to terms with this? Those kinds of changes of what you can target are who it is and then sometimes how long it's been. So if this thing was auctioned off two, three, four years ago, uh, sometimes you're going to find it's easier to target lower settlement options, lower uh, amounts of money to resolve it. When you negotiate, no matter who it is out of all of those lists of who you might possibly have to contend with, always get it in writing. You do the negotiation over the phone, but you do not release a penny of your money until you have it documented. So once you negotiate what it is you can do and you're comfortable with it and you can afford to follow through with it, then get it either faxed to you or mailed to you in writing. Review. I have an article up on our website that kind of highlights all the things that are, you want to see in a settlement agreement letter um, for unpaid debt that kind of covers your butt. They're going to make sure everything's in the letter that covers theirs. You want to make sure that you've got everything on there that covers yours. So um, we'll have that above. You can click that, read up on that settlement agreements and letters. So when you fund it, it's a good idea to fund your settlement offer from a bank account that you can track. 
Um, there's lots of really bad information online about how to send a Western Union or never send them any check or anything like that that's associated with you. Um, that's really good information if you're dealing with a scam, so you shouldn't even be dealing with a scam. What you want is a record, and you have a hard time getting that from money orders that you pick up at the grocery store or Western Union. What you want is to be able to log into your bank account, your normal bank account, if you're dealing with a legitimate debt, a legitimate debt collector, a legitimate finance company. They're not going to be you know, playing fast and loose with your bank account information or the rules and taking more or when they shouldn't or anything like that. And you do want to be able to show that you've paid something that you've agreed to by a certain date. And the best way to do that is your bank account. If you have more than one debt to settle, I do recommend you open up a separate account, but I have other videos and other things on the CRN site that talk about that. It's okay to pay once you have the letter. I do encourage you to get your settlements done in one payment whenever possible. I know that that's not always possible. So structure your settlement payments in as few a payments as you can because life happens. You're on my YouTube channel where I definitely almost exclusively talk about triage debt and credit situations. So you're here because life happens. Life isn't going to stop happening just because you, you made an agreement. What if you fall short? And that's one of the reasons I don't want you to make one payment, two payments, and not make the third payment, and then the deal's gone. So those are most of what I wanted to cover. Um, if you have questions, if you have a situation that I didn't talk about or you want me to dig into more details with you, you're more than welcome to post in the comments below. You can also reach me through the toll-free number that's on the screen. If you press 2, option 2 rings my phone. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.